We're about to get into the weeds on some serious tweaking here on DXVK State Cache and Apex Legends and showing you comparable results between Windows and Linux and how Linux outperforms Windows in this game after tweaks are done. Now, you might be sitting there going, well, I don't want to tweak my game. And to you, I say, what are you doing PC gaming? I mean, whether you're on Windows or Linux, it's kind of what PC gamers do. We tweak. If you're not a tweak, you don't like to do any of that, uh, typically you're just a console gamer in my book. So now that we passed that, why is this a big deal? And yes, this is a little bit complex, but I just want to say before we get into it, that when we move all this and we change these things and, and do this state cache, this is all done manually right now because this game just got Linux support like a month ago. And it's only a matter of time before these state caches are generated automatically by Steam and the community and you don't run into any of this that I'm about to show. So if you're watching this a year from now in the great year of 2023, yeah, you probably don't need to do any of this. Uh, at least I hope not. Uh, I think uh, it's already being done for a game called Elden Ring. I've already covered that, how once we installed it, got it all going right, and my Linux install was done correctly, it actually played better than Windows. Apex Legends doesn't out of the box, and if you'd like to see a full two-hour-long live stream of me just competitively gaming Apex Legends, or actually it was the first time I ever played the game, so I wouldn't say competitive by any means, uh, throwing my corpse at people, uh, by all means check out the link down in the description. It's to my gaming channel. It's mainly just live streams and stuff. I know that's not this cup of tea over here. I like to make everything very precise here, and that's why I don't want to upload live streams that are two hours long. I want to be respective of your feet. But for those of you that go, ah, oh, you tweak something in this to make it look like this, go watch that live stream. You'll immediately go, hmm, yeah, no, Titus literally played this game for two hours and it looked smooth as butter. So let's get into the fix. Oh man, that was a two minute rant and I apologize, but... First off, what is state cache? State cache gets built automatically. Let's say you don't want to do any of this and you're like, Titus, that's just not my jam. I just want to pull up Steam. I want to hit play and play my game. I say, okay, that's fine. If you do that on Linux and Apex Legends, it's going to be awful when you load up. And it's going to be awful for about 20 minutes. It's going to start as awful and then slowly slide over to good. And then after about 20 minutes, it'll be great. <laughs> That's just how this cache gets built. It gets built on the fly, and if you change maps and other things, it needs to rebuild that cache uh, if it doesn't already have it in, in the cache. However, I don't like that. I like my games just to play smooth as butter as soon as I launch them. Even if it is a game I don't care about, like Apex Legends... I want it to be good, and that's where the state cache comes in. So when you just click on this, you download the cache from this Reddit article. Uh, it's going to be changed almost a, a daily basis whenever you have a new map added or a new entity or a new skin. They need to build up the, the cache for it. So that's what this is. This whole article breaks down how this is done. It's basically a bunch of people send their cache files to it, and they use a merge tool to make one glorious, wonderful, gigantic cache. When I say gigantic, I mean about three megs, which is nothing. <laughs> and let's just say uh, reading an email usually is larger than three megs, so it's really not that big. Uh, but these cache files need to be added in there. So we'll download this one right here. And, or, and actually it's uh, up here. We'll download this cache file. It's just called R5 Apex DXBK cache. I downloaded one yesterday before I played. And in my downloads folder, you can see that right here. This one's 2.4 megabytes. And this one I just downloaded today because they released a new map and some other big, big changes to the actual game itself. So obviously we need to need those shaders and other things that added to this cache. So this one right here is 3.1. I wanted to show about a, a, a good map edition, a massive patch, about eight meg or eight gigabyte patch. Oh man, it's a pain in the butt to get that working uh, throughout uh, Windows and Linux because I had to download it twice. Uh, but it, needless to say, let's, uh, let's just rename this what it should be called. And we're going to take that and then we're going to put it in the common files wherever uh, this resides. So let's uh, look back on 
our article here. It needs to go into the Steam app, Shader Cache, all the way into here. The game for Apex Legends is this number. I wish they'd like labeled them better, but you know, that's just kind of where we're at. So let's uh, launch into our terminal. And uh, you don't necessarily have to use terminal for this. I guess you could use file browser, but I'm going to use terminal. And this is where we go into our shader cache. And this one was the 12.117.2470 and DXVK. And here's the old cache files. The dot old cache files was something I did at the very beginning of that stream when it's all messed up and real laggy. That was my old cache file. I downloaded that 2.4 meg one and uh, this was all pretty good. But let's just remove those and we're just gonna copy from downloads folder to this folder. And now you'll see this cache file in here exactly as it is and it is now three megs that will make sure we're not compiling cache every time and then all we do is come back into apex uh, make sure you close out of apex before you do this uh, and then just launch play into apex legends and we're going to play something and here we are i'm going to start i'm just going to do a training match because i want to overlay windows and linux side by side and uh, i'll boot into windows and do the exact same here uh, we'll do one pass through solely on Linux so you get to see the run. And then we'll do the exact same thing on Windows. And that way we can do more of a side by side comparison. Again, for actual gameplay, check out that video below. All right, here we go. Now, what I want you to watch is that frame time over on the left. And we're going to go over to our little tower. And we're getting a. This is a Vegas 64 on a 5600X. And we're getting really good frame times all the way up in the hundreds on this about four or five year old GPU. Uh, maybe I'll upgrade it here in a bit as I'm gaming a lot more these days. But what we're looking for is a lot of jitter between here on the frame times. And you can see as I'm loading more elements, those frame times increase. So if I'm looking at a wall, higher FPS, obviously I'm capping about 144. And here we go. So look for frame drops, but more so the thing that affects the gameplay the most is that frame time. Seeing peaks through those frame times is one thing that really affects gameplay in a, a big way, especially when you get shooter games like this. So I'm trying to kind of keep my point of view in the center of the map. And this right here is the full run and the whole purpose of this restart really was to use the exact same hardware i i want to dual boot back and forth that's why uh we're doing it this this method so we'll go ahead and hit play to apex you'll notice the launch is a little bit slower on windows for some odd reason the splash screen with eac is longer on windows we're still using eac in linux it still installed it but for some odd reason it happens. Okay, so we're in our training. We're coming right out of the tunnel. We look and we were capping when we go into the wall over here. About 144. So we're going to run across. Now this is an optimized version of Windows. So some people that don't optimize their Windows quite like me will run into far, far worse performance. So I do anticipate my Windows beating out Linux's. Uh, there's no reason why it wouldn't. But already I'm starting to see some frame times that don't look as good as the Linux counterpart, which, man, that that's like a good 10 or 20 frames off from, from Linux, which, I don't know. I'm a little perplexed of how bad this is compared to the Linux one, which, I don't know. I don't know yet. Let's uh, let's see how this looks. Yeah, I I think that's a good ten or twenty frames below. Those that don't optimize their windows and just play, uh, probably seeing more towards twenty or thirty frames difference between Linux and Windows. What the hell? Let's discuss this. So with those results, what was happening with? those frame rates. I, I swear Windows was lower. I guess I'll know on the edit here, but 
I was looking at that wall and I know I was hitting about 144 on Linux and on Windows, it looks like it was struggling to even hit 120, which was very, very odd. Uh, I mean, personally, I don't really care as long as it's over 60 frames. I'm like, whatever. But at the same time, this is a shocking thing. And is even though I know some people out there don't want to do tweaks to get this all working like this, I just wanted to kind of show this. If you're a competitive Apex player out there, uh, you would be remiss to not use Linux because you're sacrificing frames by using Windows, which is very, very odd, uh, a very strange thing to say. And I just want to kind of put this last thought in your head. If it's already looking like this in the early days, what happens when Valve optimizes this? What happens when they release a Steam OS to everyone and it is a better experience than the Windows counterpart, and you get more performance, and it treats it more like a console. I know at the very beginning there, I was kind of uh, saying, hey, consoles are a better user experience, but there's no reason PC needs to be as bad of an experience as it is right now. It could be really good, and with the advent of Steam OS and how it does things, not just the Steam Deck, but I'm, I'm more concerned about the actual PC because, frankly, I, I love PC gaming. Big desktops are my bag. And I see this, and all I see in two years, I'm, I'm extremely optimistic. I'm just going to keep making videos every time I run into something like this because this is very intriguing for the future of PC gaming because... Frankly, I've been depressed for the past 10 years when it comes to PC games because it felt like everything just got worse. And uh, I was kind of lost hope in Linux for the last year or so because I just didn't see the progress on the competitive scene. And this is the first game I've seen with Easy Anti-Cheat that not only performs just as well as Windows, which that's the benchmark for me. It doesn't need to be better, but actually better. And in FPS, blows my mind. But tell me your thoughts down below. Uh, I, I hope I'm not fanboying out here. I'm trying to stay as uh, neutral as I can and keep going back and forth between Windows, Linux. But Linux is really starting to do some very impressive stuff. It's just not quite mainstream yet. There's still a lot of tweaking that needs to be done to hit these things. But I want to kind of let everyone know this is on the horizon. This is going to happen. And uh, as much as the Windows fanboys out there, I've seen them in the comments going, I'm always going to use Windows. I'm like, dude, you, you do you. But if you're a hardcore and all you played was Apex Legends, you probably should switch to Linux and do this DXVK cache thing. Because guess what? That, that 8 gigabyte patch happened today at like 10 a.m. And I was about to make the video like four hours ago, but I had to download the patch twice just to make this comparison video. I did that because I wanted to make sure that the patch didn't interfere with a Linux gamer. And it didn't. It was great. And all I did was re-download that cache. Uh, I even tried it without the cache. And I did notice that there was a little bit of um, issues, a little couple of bumps in the road before I did the cache file, but not too bad. It was still very, very playable. But I wanted to go ahead and add that extra cache in there to make it just buttery smooth all the way through on any map. And I know if I would have jumped in the new map that got released today, it would have been a lot more jittery and those frame rates would have seen a lot more mountains than just a smooth line all the way through. So with all that said, let me know your thoughts down below and I will see you in the next one. Holy smokes, that was, that was just wild.